You may be wondering why things look so different or why I'm coming to you without my eyebrows fully put on and wrapped up in a blanket that resembles a Snuggie. Well, it's because your girl is on vacation, but it was an impromptu trip that was planned by my amazing Hebei. More details on that to come. Hey, 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 guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Joining to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And if you are wondering why your girl is coming to you this week looking super comfy, if I might say so myself, it's because I am comfortable, which is a part of the reason why I'm coming to you guys with this week's chat to ask you this simple question. When was the last time you took a pause for rest? I personally couldn't have picked a better time to unplug. And luckily, I didn't have to because the hubbe in all of his intuitive wonderfulness had been talking about doing a road trip and then he just happened to plan one little unbeknownst to me. Yes, it was kind of unbeknownst to me. Unbeknownst to me. And we basically ended up packing up one day and driving up to Maine. I feel like this is a really necessary conversation because oftentimes we find ourselves working and working and working. And I always talk about the need to rest and relax, but also living faith-fueled and purpose-propelled. But even I... Yes, a joy strategist sometimes find it hard to unplug, especially when it comes to work, mainly because I enjoy the work that I do so much. Like it's a bit of a problem. I'm obsessed with your lives. I'm obsessed with you guys having joy. I'm obsessed with you finding purpose and um, just having a feel good life all around. And because of this, I find that I work a lot Um, and it's not healthy. It's not healthy. It's not good. Um, and I'm kind of obsessed with it. And so the need to unplug is real for me as well. Let me tell you how real it was. Again, this wasn't a trip that I'd necessarily planned for. So I didn't know what was going to be taking place, where we were going, what the accommodations would be like, what the Wi-Fi situation was. And as we were pulling up to the house, I remember asking Nick, is there going to be any Wi-Fi? And he said, no. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I had a mild panic attack because I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to check emails? I haven't checked anything all week. I haven't been responding all week because I was planning on doing it today or tomorrow, tomorrow being Thursday, the day after we left. And so because of this trip, I really had to take a pause and do nothing as it relates to work for about four days. And let me tell you, it has been so welcome and it has been good for the mind, the body, and the soul to just be outside to spend time with family and the people that I love and also to just like not open my computer or obsess about emails as soon as I wake up and all the other things that sometimes play into my like general day-to-day living and activities. The whole time we've been here, I've answered about two emails. I had one client call and the rest of the time has been spent, you know, just kind of hanging out and reading and walking and chatting, which has been very, very nice. And when I'm telling y'all that we are unplugged, we are unplugged, okay? Right now we're currently staying in a cabin. The cabin is really cute, very cozy, very much my vibe. Thank you, baby. Um, The hubby planned very, very well. It's very rusticy. There's no running water. There's an outhouse. Like it is as rustic as almost rustic can get because there is electricity so we have light and we're using a stove for heat and things like that uh we've been playing board games with the kids i started reading a book that i've been carrying around for the past two months and it's actually really good i'll be reviewing this for you guys later um i've been able to sleep in and the reason why i'm sharing all of this is because i'd like to encourage you as you are listening to take a moment to consider The last time you took a pause for rest, what did it look like? What does rest for you even feel like? What does it encompass if you had a moment to take some time for rest? Because again, I know that some of you are overwhelmed, overworked, and over it. But if you could take a pause for rest, what would it look like? Who would you surround yourself with? And what would you do? Just some things to think about. Get crazy, you know, as you think about it. 
Because let me tell you what happens when you give yourself that space and time, or even if you accept it, because sometimes there are people around you who may be offering you that time and that space to take rest. And because sometimes we have it in our minds that we can and we should do it all, it can be very hard to receive that help and accept it. But when you take that time to rest, you leave more inspired, you leave more creative, you leave with Um, better formed relationships. And as you do this, you're also able to deepen your connection with yourself and understanding who you are, what it is that you want, but more importantly, what it is that you want for yourself moving forward. And as I'm saying this for you, I am also saying it for myself because all of those things have transpired in the four days that we've been here. Being on this trip has really solidified it for me in understanding that I may need to reevaluate my relationship with work. And I think that the reason why this is hitting me so hard is because of a devotional message that I had earlier in the week. And it really hit me like, it hit me. I don't even know how to describe how much it hit me. But as I was reading these scriptures from Hebrews, it almost felt like the Holy Spirit was really trying to land something, something that I feel like I've been pushing off all year. And like I've been dabbling with the idea of rest. It's something that's all over my vision board. It's something that I speak about a lot. And I've kind of been half in, half out in just committing to the habit of rest, but also doing it in a way where the rest isn't being done to just like pacify the idea of getting rest, but really actually taking full on rest. If you look at the Old Testament, God speaks a lot about rest and the importance of prioritizing rest. But in considering rest, he very specifically mentions the Sabbath and taking that time to do absolutely nothing. And these days, I find that it's very easy for um, those of us, especially those of us who are believers, those of us who um, subscribe to the Christian faith, to kind of like take that instruction as a throwaway instruction. You know, the Sabbath being Sunday is a day that we spend time with family but i don't know if you're anything like me every once in a while you may send an email you may clock in for whatever your job or your gig is you may pick up a job here and there but um for me it really became um a point of focus and just understanding how important it is to rest on that day and there was one scripture in particular in leviticus um that really hit me earlier this year and it's something that plays in my mind over and over again it had to do with the sabbath year and every seventh year there needing to be a a time of rest like for all the people of israel but also for their land and everything it was called the year of jubilee and um at one point when God is outlining the rules and regulations, laws, and all of the things that the Israelites have to keep, he mentioned that this year of Jubilee had to be kept. And if it wasn't, that at some point, the land would have its rest. The land would have its rest. And it repeated this a couple of times, basically meaning, or basically stating to the people that If you don't take time to prioritize this rest that I am commanding you to take, that I am demanding that you take, at some point, like evidence of the need for this will begin to show up. And when you think about us as humans and our bodies and our physical, you know, the way the ways that we're made up, it can show up in a lot of ways. Lack of rest can contribute to a lot of different Uh, health ailments and issues, both mentally, physically, not to mention emotionally, it really can begin to play on you if you are someone who doesn't prioritize your rest. Earlier this week, there was a scripture that came up for me in Hebrews, and it really did get me thinking about how a lot of times when I'm working on things that I'm really passionate about, I my energy and all of my attention and all of my focus on things. And then if the thing doesn't work out, the disappointment isn't so much in the fact that I tried because that's just something that I naturally do. But a lot of times the disappointment occurs when I've tried really hard at something and it doesn't work out. And 
one of the things that came to me in prayer as I was just like speaking with the Lord about my feelings about um, certain things that have happened in the past couple months, and it, I promise it came like a Holy Spirit whisper, was that you didn't rest. Well, it didn't come to me like that. It actually came to me in the form of scripture. <laughs> and the scripture came from Hebrews chapter 3. And it went a little something like this. And I promise you guys, this is something that came up three different times in the same scripture. And it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. And again, in verse 15, it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in rebellion. And then again, in verse seven, it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Now, the reason why I feel like this is so important to mention is because if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, then you know that the number three is a thing for me. It's my favorite number, but I also believe that things are confirmed in threes. So anytime I hear a message or I feel something or I think the Lord is speaking to me about something, I say, all right, Lord, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. The first time I hear it, cool, noted. The second time I hear it, my ears start to pick, perk up a little bit. The third time I hear it, I take that as confirmation to move forward with whatever the thought or the idea or something is. Because I always say, Lord, tell me three times so I know that it's real. And that's what happened in this particular vo verse. But this was the part that really got me paying attention when I was reading these verses. In Hebrews chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, it says, actually, I should just read the whole thing. Verses 7 through 12, it says, So as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as you did in the rebellion, during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, and for 40 years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Ooh, so good. Then in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19, it says, So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. And then it continues on in chapter four. And like, really, there's so much that could be said about this chapter. But the verses that I'm going to focus on are um, Hebrews chapter four, verses nine through 12. And it says, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God rests also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their own example of disobedience. And then in verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him whom we must give account. Now, this kind of blew my mind for a number of reasons. Uh, because when I read that verse in chapter, when I read verse nine, I really did feel a moment of conviction where it says there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rest from his own work, just as God did from his. And with this, there's a reference to um, some passages from the from Genesis, where it talks about, oh, Genesis 2, 2, where the creation of earth is really outlined for us. And we understand that God rested on the Sabbath day. And it got me thinking about me and how I operate sometimes when it comes to work and thinking that I need to do all the things or I need to be working all the time and almost thinking that the harder I work, the more results I will be able to create. But we all know that that's not necessarily true. And also believing at times, if I'm being completely honest with you, that if I work really hard, that the results are guaranteed. And that's not the case either. Being someone who's led by faith and propelled by purpose, I also like to think that if I'm moving forward with faith 
anything that I'm pursuing by faith will automatically prove to yield the desired result. And while that may be true, that's not to say that the result will happen in real time or that it will happen immediately because faith without works is dead. Yes. So yes, you have to do things, but that also doesn't mean that God is going to work in your time and also in your way or the way that you expect. So I think that oftentimes when the results don't happen in the way that we desire or as quickly as we desire, it's very easy to become disheartened or discouraged. And because of how easy it is to relate your successes to how hard you work or even your ability to control your success, it can be very easy to then keep pushing, pushing, pushing to make the results happen. And this can also lead to you being more overworked and overwhelmed. Having said all that, when I really consider my own journey to purpose, I can see moments of my journey where that has been the case for me, like really pushing to try to make something happen. Okay, this thing didn't work out for me the first time this way, so I'm going to try it again this way with a little more knowledge, but I'm going to keep doing it until I get it right. When really a message that I personally have been receiving this this year is that I should do less. And I know that that sounds so like anti what we've been taught and what we've been told, but I kid you not, it's like a message that I keep receiving. And, and a couple of weeks ago when I was having a moment, um, that was the message that came back to me. Not Erica, you need to do more. Not Erica, you should try this thing this way and keep pushing through. But the message that came to me was, rest. <laughs> and the thing that really got me about these verses in particular is the, um, actually, I didn't even read the passage, but it comes from Hebrews four verses two, where it says, for we have also had the gospel preached to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. Ooh. So the thing that kind of blew my mind about this scripture in particular is that the author of Hebrews is telling us that essentially our ability to enter rest is a reflection of our belief by faith. And it basically... It, it basically tells us that the moment that we don't truly believe something, like we don't, we aren't moving fully by faith, we're falling into unbelief and that unbelief can cause us or can keep us from entering the rest that we've been promised as God's children. And I have to say, I can totally see that. And in a lot of ways that I, I agree, because if you're working so hard to do something, to produce an outcome that you are saying that you are trusting or believing in by faith, but then you're working really hard to kind of manipulate it into hap happening, then are you truly moving by faith? Are you truly trusting or are you trusting in yourself as a human being, as a man, as a woman, are you trusting more in yourself and your ability to create the outcome than trusting in God himself to use you or work through you in order to create the outcome? And I found that that's a question that I've been asking myself a lot in the past couple of weeks um, as I kind of have this conversation with myself and understanding why there are moments where I find it so difficult to rest. And when I say rest, like really just like turn my mind off and relax, which is something that this four day weekend has given me up here in Maine. Um, otherwise I would find it very difficult to just like not do anything or not feel the need to open an email, send out emails, contact whoever, like basically just trying to create ways to I don't want to say manipulate, but maneuver my way into creating the outcomes that I desire. And basically here, the author of Hebrews is saying that the moment you aren't making time for rest, you're essentially allowing yourself 
to follow your own example of disobedience. And that can look a number of ways. I can't even begin to like dive into this conversation. But personally, for me, what that disobedience looks like is basically not taking rest because that was an instruction that I was given earlier this year. But also in like, considering the sin part of the conversation, self-idolizing or self-sufficiency. The moment you're, you start believing that you are fully in control of all of the moving pieces and that you can do whatever it is that's needed in order to create the outcome that you want. Not only are you like bringing more stress on yourself, <laughs> you're, you're making more work for yourself in a lot of ways. Because when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, like nothing is ever fully in our control. There are too many variables. But on top of that, you're setting yourself up to start idolizing yourself and your ability to do things rather than trusting God's ability to do the things that he's promised you. Like, are you picking up what I'm putting down? That's something that I really had to sit with a couple of months ago is I realized that that's what it was for me personally in my inability to rest, thinking that, oh, if I don't do this, one, who will? But also I have to do this in order for this to happen in my journey to purpose. And as I do this work that I really wholeheartedly believe that God has called me to, um, a big prayer is that one, God humbles me and keeps me humble, um, you know, because nobody likes a big inflated head or ego, but also that anything that would keep me from actually doing his work, his way and his will for my life, that he wouldn't cause it to happen. Like, not to say that he wouldn't bring me success, that he would make it such an obvious like no go for me that I'm able to know exactly which directions he wants me to go in based on his will. And so the more I key into the things that are happening in my life, the clearer I get about the direction that he wants me to go in and the ways that he wants me to go in. And also the more like attuned, I believe my spirit gets with his in understanding um, the need to really surrender to the Holy Spirit and seek guidance and asking for um, understanding, like spirit-led, Holy Spirit-led understanding versus like leaning on my own understanding in my own ways because I'm merely a human, you know? And I think a lot of times we, we place a lot of emphasis on the things that we know when there's so much that we don't know. But the person who does know and knows best is our creator and heavenly father. So, um, yeah, I just thought that this, this scripture was really interesting. Um, I thought this message was really interesting. I thought that this trip was very timely considering um, this message of rest that had come up for me repeatedly, but also seeing here how someone's inability to enter rest can really be a reflection of their unbelief. So I hope that this wasn't too confusing, but I also would like to encourage you guys to rest while also considering the things that you are believing God for, things that you are trusting God for, um, and things that you are really moving forward with by faith and seeing how you may be getting in your own way because you're not doing something as simple as resting, right? But in addition to supporting these reasons that have been given to you, from the word of God himself as to why you should rest. I would like to encourage you to rest and spend time um, enjoying life and the people and places around you because tomorrow isn't guaranteed, right? There's no better time than the present, no day like today, but also you don't know which day will be your last. So if you can take time to spend with the people that you love, doing the things that you love in the places that you love, make time to do it. You won't be sorry that you did and it'll enrich your life and the lives of those around you more than you ever know. And with this, I am going to share some solutions to help you tap into your joy as you journey to purpose and strengthening your belief so that you can enter rest. Um, but I'm also not going to be sharing any joy gems this week because 
this whole thing has practically been a joy gem. Read Hebrews 3, starting from verse 7 through uh, chapter 4 of Hebrews, and you'll see all of the goodness that was there to be had. If you've been listening to this entire episode and you're thinking, okay, I hear you, I hear you. Girl, you're telling me I need to rest, but I don't know how to turn my mind off, and I don't even know what rest and relaxation looks like for me right now. Don't worry, I've got you. Keep listening through this quick break as I share a journey to purpose resource that can help you journey on your way to more rest and relaxation starting today. (laughs) If you have an awareness of your need to find your joy or rediscover yourself or understand yourself better in this season of your life, I would love to invite you to visit my site, ericalassan.com and take the joy quest. As you go through the joy quest, you'll be able to engage with a vision of what you really desire for your life to be like, feel like, look like, taste like and all the things but more importantly by the end of this self-paced program and it only takes 45 minutes to an hour you'll have clarity in your vision you'll have an understanding and a roadmap of what it takes to get you there as well as a process to make sure that you stay there but lastly you'll have the ability to give yourself permission to actually pursue a life of joy unapologetically. And with this, you'll gain the confidence to live a life of freedom that will actually put you on path for your purpose so that you can start living the life of your dreams starting today. Not only do you deserve it, but the world needs you. They need your gifts, they need your talents, they need everything that you have to offer, but more importantly, they need you happy, whole, and healed. And the Joy Quest can help you get there. All right, so here we go, solutions. The first solution I'm gonna offer you is that you understand what rest and relaxation means for you and what it looks like for you because it doesn't look the same for everyone. And then the second solution is to plan a time to actually engage in said rest. Figure out what that rest looks like and then create a time to do it. There's no time like the present, no day like today. But let's say you can't go on a four day getaway. (laughs) Plan a time within the next month month or so to engage in that element of rest for yourself. And the third solution that I'm going to share with you is that you also get some accountability. I talk about accountability all the time because it's so paramount to you being able to actually create processes that lead you to progress, but also sticking to them. Get some accountability or a buddy to hold you to the vision of what your rest and relaxation looks like. For me, this particular time around, it came in a form that I didn't even expect. The hubby really surprised me and I'm so grateful because it was exactly what the doctor ordered. And I can't wait to see what it brings up um, in the time when we get back to New Jersey and how it'll actually support the work that's being done for the last two months of the year as we go into 2022. With all of that said, y'all, I think that that concludes this week's episode. Everyone is sleeping. I hope I'm not keeping anybody up. Also, it's daylight savings tomorrow, and I am not ready. So (laughs) I always hate falling behind. I hate losing that hour of sleep. Your girl really, really likes to sleep. So I am going to be taking myself to bed so that I can get up early and we can pack and put things away and head on back down to New Jersey. But I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments or wherever you happen to be listening to this podcast or if you're watching on YouTube, what is one thing that you would like to do for rest and relaxation? And I'm really talking about that deep R&R before the end of 2021. Let me know in the comments how you relax, how you rest, and when you plan on really soaking up that rest and relaxation time. But I'd also like to know what are some things that keep you from engaging in rest and relaxation, like full on to the point where you can turn your mind off or, and do absolutely nothing, if that's what your thing is. What keeps you from resting and relaxing? I'd love to know in the comments. 
If you found this episode useful and you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you happen to be listening to this podcast on any audio streaming platforms, please subscribe as well so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And I hope that you guys come back next week because we are going to be diving into conversations about relationships, the holiday season, and also how to support small businesses throughout the holiday season as well. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week and I look forward to chatting with you as we gather again to join you together next week one feel good thing at a time see you then bye